What is a VCA? Today we're going to look at two different meanings or usages for the term VCA. The first we'll look at is in analog synthesis. VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier, and in the virtual world or with digital synthesizers, you might see DCA instead of VCA, which stands for Digitally Controlled Amplifier, but it means basically the same thing, just in the digital world. Now with synthesizers, VCA literally means an amplifier whose gain is set by an external control voltage. So you route the audio signal created in the synthesizer through the VCA and also send a control voltage into the VCA from another module, usually an envelope generator of some sort, and the VCA sets its output level based on that incoming control voltage. So we've got signal, and we've got control, and that gives us our output level. If the VCA receives a lower control voltage, its output level goes down. If it receives a higher control voltage, the output level goes up. Makes sense, right? Now there are two sort of wrinkles associated with this. First, we call VCA's amplifiers, but this is a little bit misleading. Most VCAs can't exceed unity gain, in other words, they can't make the signal louder. They can only attenuate or reduce the signal level. Second, if you really want to get tweaky, there are two types of VCAs used in synthesizers, 2-quadrant and 4-quadrant. With a 2-quadrant VCA, when the control voltage drops to zero or goes below zero, this takes the signal level all the way down or turns it off, and the sound stays off even if the control voltage continues to drop below zero or become more negative. With a 4-quadrant VCA, if the control voltage drops below zero or becomes negative, the signal level actually begins to increase again, but it'll be inverted in polarity. This is sometimes used to produce amplitude modulation and ring modulation effects. Now, our second application for the term VCA is in mixing consoles. Once again, VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. And in this case, the VCA is used to set the level for a fader, or more commonly for a group of faders. And it maintains the relative level among them as you move the VCA. Now, no signal passes through the VCA in a mixer. It's used for overall volume control over the faders. And this is different from a subgroup or a bus. A subgroup or a bus mixes the signals together, so you can apply processing to the overall subgroup or bus mix, and you can set the level for the overall subgroup mix. With a mixer VCA, on the other hand, the mixer channels remain independent and aren't subgrouped together. Rather, the VCA is sort of serving as a remote control over the setting of the faders for whatever channels it's assigned to. Let's take a look at how this might work in a DAW on your computer. It's a little bit easier to see in action than it is to actually describe. I've created a mix in Studio One from Presonus that has a, a drum set with individual tracks for the drums, bass, keys, rhythm guitar, and lead guitar. Now the drums are all feeding into a subgroup over here. So the output from all these signals is being summed together inside this, and we can set the overall level by turning that subgroup up and down, and we can also apply processing, such as this compressor, to that overall submix. So all the drums will be compressed by this single compressor because everything is going through this subgroup channel. And this works great for controlling the level and for applying processing. But if we want to keep the tracks independent and still be able to adjust their volume, we can assign a VCA. So let's select these tracks, come over here, and we'll add a VCA for selected channels. This is our VCA, and if you watch our drum tracks on the left, you'll see that as I move that, the drum tracks are moving up and down. The other important thing is that their levels are being maintained. The relative levels are being maintained as I change those. So this gives us remote control while keeping those channels independent. Also, if we have sends that are set up post fader, as I do here for my drum reverb, that's going to change as I move this VCA, because again, it's happening post fader. In some cases, you might want to use just a subgroup, as we have here, so we can apply processing and sum all those together for easy control. But in other cases, we don't want to subgroup everything together, and that's where a VCA becomes very useful, because we can control the overall level of our group of tracks without having to sum them separately from the main output. Another final creative option with a VCA is we can automate this as well. So we can automate what's happening with the VCA and change the overall level of our independent tracks all at the same time. This is just one example of how you might use a VCA. There are many more. And of course, there are often several ways to accomplish the same sort of thing. But a VCA in a mixer gives you another tool for managing the mix, whether in a DAW or in a hardware mixing console. If you want to learn more about audio and music concepts like this, visit the news and research page at sweetwater.com or check out the other videos in our Glossary Terms playlist. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.